the lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark glory to you o lord when jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed by the lake side then one of the synagogue officials came up jairus by name and seeing him fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly saying my little daughter is desperately sick do come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life jesus went with him and a large crowd followed him they were pressing all around him now there was a woman who had suffered from hemorrhage for 12 years after long and painful treatment under various doctors she had spent all she had without being any the better for it in fact she was getting worse she had heard about jesus and she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his cloak if i can touch even his clothes she had told herself i shall be well again and the soles of the bleeding dried up instantly and she felt in herself that she was cured of her complaint immediately aware that power had gone out from him jesus turned round in the crowd and said who touched my clothes his disciples said to him you see how the crowd is pressing around you and yet you say who touched me but he continued to look all around to see who had done it then the woman came forward frightened and trembling because she knew what had happened to her and she fell at his feet and told him the whole truth my daughter he said your faith has restored you to health go in peace and be free from your complaint while he was still speaking some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say your daughter is dead why put the master to any further trouble but jesus had overheard this remark of theirs and he said to the official do not be afraid only have faith and he allowed no one to go with him except peter and james and john the brother of james so they came to the official's house and jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping wailing unrestrainedly he went in and said to them why all these commotion and crying the child is not dead but asleep but they laughed at him so he turned them all out and taking with him the child's father and mother and his own companions he went into the place where the child lay and taking the child by the hand he said to her talita kum which means little girl i tell you to get up the little girl got up at once and began to walk about for she was 12 years old at this they were overcome with astonishment and he ordered them strictly not to let anyone know about it and told them to give her something to eat the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord, lord jesus christ. christ praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters today we have a beautiful passage to reflect so one by one let us reflect this passage there are two miracles in this passage one is healing of jairus daughter and the second one healing of that bleeding woman and there are so many things very special with this jairus daughter was 12 years old and um, she was dying and uh, she was suffering and the bleeding woman was suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years so you can see 12 years old girl whom jairus is missing and 12 year of of suffering of this poor woman jairus is a synagogue official a jewish man a learned man he knew the bible very well he was in charge of a synagogue he's like a sacristan who has got full authority so we all have in the church a sacristan who is having full authority on the uh, church 
but not like our sacristans who do not have full authority but parish parish priest has authority but in the olden times in synagogues in the jewish synagogues the synagogue official the authority the in charge of the synagogue has full authority on the synagogue so he knew the bible old testament he reads he has opportunities to read it he knows and uh, he listen to all the preachings and everything so he is a very learned man but this poor lady she is a illiterate ordinary woman this synagogue official is very wealthy rich man but this poor lady is she is poor and then this synagogue official is coming to jesus publicly to receive healing but this poor lady is coming to jesus secretly to receive healing and when jesus healed the daughter of this synagogue official jesus did the healing secretly and made only his inner circle of disciples and his parents of the child but when jesus healed the woman who came to him secretly jesus made sure that it is publicized public uh, publicized pub, uh, in front of everyone so there are so many things connected in this uh, passage so let's one by one read this passage and understand the something from this passage let's read gospel of mark chapter 5 verse 21 onwards let's read gospel of mark chapter 5 verse 21 onwards we read like this when jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed by the lake side then one of the synagogue officials came up jairus by name and seeing him fell at his feet see jairus is a very powerful official who is in charge of the synagogue but when he came to jesus he fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly saying my little daughter is desperately sick to come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her and then jesus went with him there is something that we need to remember you know if you read gospel luke chapter 7 you can read it later and there is a passage mentioning about a centurion is a gentile a centur roman centurion when he comes to ask for a healing he said jesus you don't need to come to my home just say one word that's enough i'm not worthy to take you under my roof but you just say one word healing will happen so a centurion a roman soldier who doesn't know the bible he is not learned man he is not a theologian he doesn't know anything about the bible the old testament but he had strong faith and he said jesus doesn't need to come he just one word enough healing will take place but in today's gospel you see a synagogue official he knows the bible he listen to the word every day and he is always in the church in the synagogue but his faith has some problem he says my little daughter is desperately sick do you have to come and you have to lay the hands on her and make, make her better so now he is dictating how jesus should heal him he is telling jesus is not enough that you sit here and pray you have to come over there you have to lay the hands on the baby and then she will get healing his faith is lesser than that centurion who is a gentile remember just because you know everything you know the bible doesn't mean that you have strong faith this is something that we need to remember in this modern world i have seen many many people even priest who are well versed in the bible have taken doctorates and teaching in the seminaries and professors but not having strong faith in god though they have doctorates and degrees attached to their names i've seen people making the priest even priests and professors making big blunders which are against the teaching of jesus teaching of bible therefore just because someone is a priest or someone known as a priest doesn't mean you will get all the answers for all your problems always remember the knowledge is different the faith is different just because you have knowledge you don't need to have the strong faith this man 
he had the knowledge but his faith was lesser than the centurion who was a gentile he doesn't have knowledge but he has faith my dear brothers and sisters this is something that you need to remember you know for example i have seen so many software engineers they have passed their exam and everything and and degrees but their capacities are different some every one has got the same education same process but after that when you when they get a job some are excellent in performance and some are very bad some are not able to solve the problems some are not it is not only about the software engineers but also even doctors everyone all the doctors get the same kind of education in the same university same classroom and same training but some doctors are exceptional and excellent in their work because they are able to diagnose the problem within no time but some with the same sickness with the same problem some doctors who have gone through the same teaching and same studies are not able to diagnose the sickness but instead they will make mistakes always remember therefore just because someone is a priest or someone has studied theology someone is teaching in the seminary or someone is professor doesn't mean that you will get the correct answer that god wants you to give therefore always remember i, I always used to feel i had some very good icons in front of me uh, some priest whom i trusted so much and then always i used to make sure that whatever they say is 100% correct i used to believe that just like your children when they go to schools until then they trusted you and whatever you say was 100% correct for them but now once they start going to the school even the nonsense which the teachers are pre telling them they believe 100% but may not believe you pa parents because they think you don't know anything but their teacher knows everything that is quite natural it's a human tendency to trust some people 100% and i also i was also a person like these i used to trust a certain priest and certain people certain theologian certain professors as if they know the whole bible 100% but later once we started reading bible understanding the meanings of it reading the catechism of the catholic church and keeping it together and understanding and studying it all these things i have noticed many people are making mistakes in their interpretations therefore we need to be very careful when you listen and believe the certain theological interpretations that is why we have the holy bible and catechism of the catholic church if you listen to any preaching including mine don't just believe it 100% but make sure that it goes according to the word of god that is written in the bible and also according to the catechism of the catholic church which is also written and given to us if it is against it we don't just need to blindly obey or listen any wrong teachings especially in these modern times you must have heard in many countries especially in germany some priest even going against the catechism of the catholic church and blessing the homosexual unions and marriages and there are so many issues and things which you can see and even among the priest i know certain priest and in some countries who even say jesus christ is one of the saviors though they are priest and they continue to be a priest but they do make mistakes so therefore my dear brothers and sisters just because someone is knowledgeable that doesn't mean they have the strong faith so that we can follow you should have only one role model not any priest not any professors not any theologians but jesus christ and if you want to follow the teachings follow the teaching of jesus christ in the bible and also in the catechism of the catholic church any nowadays if any any preaching i hear or any by or any book which i read and any instruction or interpretation i get i always wants to make sure that it is according to the word of god and also according to the catechism of the catholic church once it is assured i am not scared to preach this gospel my dear brothers and sisters we all need to make sure this is established because there are so many false prophets in this world there are so many false teachings in this world 
and so many false prophets in the form of angels coming in front of you and teaching you therefore we have to be very careful in discerning the teaching of our Christ our Lord Jesus Christ praise the Lord thank you Jesus so that is why in today's gospel the synagogue official he was well versed in the Bible but his faith was very limited faith he was binding Jesus but still Jesus kept quiet and Jesus went with him but in remember centurion's case in gospel of Luke chapter 7 the centurion he said Jesus I'm not worthy to welcome you under my roof but you just say one word it will happen Jesus said the word it happened it happened instantly but in this case this synagogue official he said Jesus you have to come you lay, lay the hands on this sick person and then he will be healed she will be healed then Jesus Jesus though he could have healed that girl instantly Jesus listened his faith was less therefore his blessing was delayed centurion's faith was strong the instant healing instant blessing happened but this faith his faith was not so strong and that was the reason as we can read you know when you read these Bible passages you can see when a miracle a story is written down in between another story is fixed as if a sandwich between two bread something else is fixed inside the same way a story is narrated in between the story in between this incident another story is fixed inside why because you know if you continue reading let's read like this let's continue reading him fell okay continue verse next verse 22 a large crowd followed him they were pressing all around him now the, okay let's read uh, verse uh, previous word fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly saying my little daughter is desperately sick do come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed him praise the Lord this man said come you come and lay the hands his faith was very shallow you know even today just because a priest knows the whole Bible doesn't mean they have the strong faith but at the same time if he celebrates the holy mass if he administer any sacrament all those who, who have faith and those who do not have faith but if they are priest they have equal power in administ and administering the sacraments so that is how the Lord has created the power of the priesthood so here this man he said Jesus you come and lay the hands on and this uh, my daughter and she will be healed and then uh, we read verse 23 verse 24 let's read we read like this gospel of mark chapter 5 verse 24 so he went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him see they are going on the way to the house of the uh, synagogue official and they all are following the people are following they all knew something is going to happen so they all want to follow him and then verse 25 let's read now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years now another story another incident another miracle is mentioned here now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years you know just imagine the story Jesus and Jairus and her huge crowd they are walking they are going to his home and in the process they reached a place and then they saw one uh, and there were so many people uh, gathered together in this gathering of so many people so many were pressing on him and pushing pulling him and then there was one woman whom nobody noticed she was coming in secretly because of the crowd no one noticed her she was having these hemorrhages bleeding problem for 12 years those years and during that time anyone who is having this sickness are unclean if they touch anybody that person also will become unclean 
Therefore, this woman was going through a tough time for more, more than 12 years and she spent all her belongings for the doctors, medications. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Touched his cloak. And then was 28. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Praise the Lord. If I touch his clothes, I will be made well. She believed. Was 29. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Was 30. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him. Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? You know, why did Jesus ask this? You know, Jesus knew this lady is the one who touched and she got healed. And Jesus could have kept quiet. But Jesus made sure this testimony should be announced. This healing should not be hidden. This healing should be announced. Why? I believe there are so many reasons why Jesus did it. But one reason I personally feel this must be the reason why Jesus did it. Because... It was necessary for Jairus to see something supernatural in front of his eyes so that his faith will be increased. When his faith is increased, it will have impact on his family, especially for his daughter to be healed. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, during the live streaming that we do have, we do read out some of the testimonies of the people the miracles which God does in the lives of the people. We read it out during the Holy Rosary. Why do we do that? Because these testimonies which we read it out will increase the faith of the people who are joining, listening. It will increase the faith. When your faith is increased, the healing and miracle will be easier. And it will really happen. So now Jesus is instigating faith. In filling faith in Jairus by showing this miracle in front of him. And Jairus, who was sitting, standing there and watching all these things, he must be feeling inside. See, Jesus is unnecessarily wasting time and delaying, delaying everything. Jesus is unnecessarily uh, wasting time. And because of these problems that are taking place, th this is delayed. My child is going to be in danger. He must be feeling the same. Because Jesus is spend, spending a lot of time there on the way. He wanted Jesus to reach there immediately and heal. But Jesus is wasting time. But Jesus purposely did this miracle in front of him so that he should increase his faith because we already saw that his faith is less than the faith of that centurion who had, who was, though he was a Gentile, he had better faith than this synagogue official. Verse 31, we read like this. And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? Verse 20, 32. He looked all around to see who had done it. Verse 33. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. She confessed all the truth that she was doing secretly. Everybody heard it. Everybody knew she is an unholy, unclean woman. If she touched Jesus, Jesus will become unclean. As per the law of Moses. But here, when she touched the cloth of Jesus, instead of Jesus becoming unclean, this unclean woman became clean. My dear brothers and sisters, this was a, a drastic change in the Israel's beliefs. If any un unholy person comes and touches anybody else, that person will become unholy. But in the new world, especially in Christianity, in the new Israel, anybody who is unclean, the moment they come to Jesus, they will be made clean. The moment you come to Jesus, you will be made clean. 
Many a time we feel, oh, I'm unholy. I'm not worthy to stand in front of God. I am unholy. I don't want to go to church today. I'm unholy. I don't want to attend the holy mass today. I am unclean. There are people who say I am unholy and unclean. Therefore, I don't want to pray. I don't want to go to the church. I don't want to be in the church. I don't want to be in that group. My dear brothers and sisters, maybe it is so in every other religion. If you are unholy, you are not admitted in, in the holy places. If you are unclean, you are not admitted there. If you are unclean, you are not supposed to come closer or touch the holy things. But in Christianity, anyone who is unholy and unclean, the best place is go to Jesus. You will be made clean. Go and touch Jesus. You will be made holy. Go and call out the name of Jesus and hold on to him. You will be made holy. So that is the speciality of Christianity. Because but with my capacity, with my talents, with my power, I cannot make myself holy. Even if I do fasting, even if I kneel down and pray, even if I cut, on, cut off all the connections with the world, I cannot be holy unless Jesus helps me. Only Jesus can help you to become holy. Therefore, all those who feel that you are unholy and unclean, you need Jesus more than anyone else. You need to go to church more than anyone else. You need to pray and you need to hold on to Jesus and read Bible more than anyone else. The more you do these, you will be made oh, holy. Let's read verse 34. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Jesus confirmed the healing. When she gave the testimony in front of the whole world, her healing was confirmed. When you test, give your testimony of healing in front of the whole world, your healing will be confirmed. Therefore, don't hide the healings that God has given you, but testify it in front of everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Verse 35. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Do your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Now, all this time, Jairus was feeling so restless because Jesus is unnecessarily wasting time here. Jesus is delaying his journey. My daughter is dying there and he's supposed to come and touch her and heal her. But now Jesus is delaying his journey. And as he feared that things happened, his daughter died. Some people came from his home and said, do not fear. I mean, do not, uh, you know, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Then what did Jesus say? Jesus said, but overhearing what they said, Jesus overheard what they were talking. Jairus must be telling the leader, you know, I was expecting Jesus to come fast, but he's unnecessarily wasting time and he's just being held up here. Then Jesus overheard this and Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. My dear brothers and sisters, don't worry about the delay. Don't worry about being late. Just don't have fear and only believe. Only believe. Do not fear, only believe. Many a time, we are afraid. We have our own ideas how Jesus should heal. Okay, if I do this, I will be healed. If I do this, my daughter will be healed. If Jesus comes into my family, my daughter will be healed. If the priest comes and pray over, then daughter will be healed. We have our own ideas about healing. The Lord says, don't, you know, don't doubt God. Do not fear. You just have faith in God, not in the process of healing, but have faith in Jesus Christ. Don't think, okay, only if it is done, healing will take place. Only if I do this, healing will take place. No, you just believe in Jesus. He knows how to heal you. He will do it. The delaying, the being late is not a problem at all. And he said, do not fear, only believe. Only believe, have faith in God. Just believe it will happen. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, many people must be wondering why healings are not taking place. It is delayed. 
why the miracles are not happening it is delayed why my family is not blessed i am attending this live streaming for so many months but what nothing is happening do not fear only believe continue holding on to jesus continue listening to the word of god he will do the best he knows how to heal you he knows how to bless you with the best and 37 we read like this he allowed no one to follow him except peter james and john the brother of james he didn't want any unnecessary people to join with him he only wanted those people who have faith in him my dear brothers and sisters if any miracle has to take place you should be surrounded by those who people who have faith in god if you have a company of people who do not have faith there will be no miracles if your friends are all unbelievers non believers atheists and don't believe in jesus don't accept jesus then no miracles no wonders make sure your friends are all believers you make friendship friendship with those people who have faith in god there are some people always read some unnecessary books which have questioning the faith doubting the faith if you are not having a strong faith already in you don't read any books which are depicting jesus as something wrong because the liar is all out there in the social media and youtube and everywhere and speaking all lies if you go on listening to it slowly you will lose your power you will lose your anointing and then miracles won't happen the healings and intervention of god manifestations of god won't happen If you really want miracles and wonders to take place make sure you take with you only those people who have faith in Jesus Christ who have touched touched by Jesus Christ who are anointed by Christ who are with the power of the holy spirit then the miracle will happen why though Jesus was there he did not perform miracles in his own hometown the word of god says very clearly he could not perform much miracles in his own town because they did not believe him are you a person do not believe in jesus and your family members do not believe in jesus your friends do not believe in jesus even if you have faith in jesus the miracles need not take place because you are surrounded by unbelievers who have no faith in god and we read was 38 when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue he was saw a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly 39 you know weeping because if somebody dies there are some mourners you, you can get some if you pay some money you will get some people 10 people will come, come and cry and they will cry for your whole family in front of the dead body and if you have more money more people will be there to cry and you know they will just like switch on and they will start crying switch off they will stop so the some the almost similar the similar to this there are mourners who can whom you can buy and they will come and cry for you if you are not interested in crying thinking that your maker will be lost so we read what's 39 when he had entered he said to them why do you make a commotion and weep the child is not dead but sleeping was 40 and they laughed at him see until then crying now they are laughing at him that means they are not family members someone who are hired hands then he put them all outside he didn't want any one of them you know if we will think tempt you know tend to think it's better that let them also see how jesus is raising last uh, raising this woman from death you know they should see and believe they should see this miracle But remember what did Jesus do he didn't want to show off in front of the unbelievers God's miracles and wonders are not for showing off in front of others so it is something for that person and then what did Jesus do Jesus said get out everyone out of this house all those who are not ready to believe in Jesus Christ they were all asked to out go out and they were all out and only whom did Jesus take along with him he took the child's father and mother and those who were with him that is his disciples and went in where the child was and he performed healing and healed that dead body dead person came alive in the presence of those who really believed and trusted in jesus my dear brothers and sisters if you really want miracles to happen be surrounded by those people who believe in god 
Make sure your family members, everyone start believing in Jesus. Start calling out the name of Jesus. Your friendship, your connections. Make sure it's not that you should not talk to anyone else. No. Make sure that all those who are always around you, advising you, always guiding you, leading you, they should not be uh, leading you. No one should be leading you to something wrong. Make sure those friends who are advising you, leading you, guiding you should be the people who love Jesus and faith have faith in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, don't expect the miracles to happen in our life because even we may be influenced by their wrong information that they continuously feed in your mind. It's kind of a brainwashing. There are many people who are being brainwashed by their own friends. The colleagues who are working with them and studying with them in the schools and colleges and universities. Some children who are playing in the computer games and having making friendship with some unknown people sitting somewhere in the other countries and being influenced by their wrong ideologies that is being fed in their mind continuously. And then they fall into the trap of these people and fall into radicalism. We have to be very careful. That's why I said, make sure that you are always surrounded by those people who believe in Jesus and love Jesus and have faith in Jesus. And you will see all your prayers will be answered and miracles will happen. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, with these, let us thank the Lord for all what God has done in our life. And always make sure we should not be outwitted by Satan, who is trying to spread lies in this world. Just because you listen certain things, from, you know, I have seen many people saying, Father, you know, that priest told me this. See, that priest is doing like this. Or that priest is there. So it is okay. My dear brothers and sisters, just because he's a priest, he has no monopoly of the whole Bible. Just because I'm a priest, doesn't mean I know the whole Bible. Truly speaking, though I studied in the seminary for 12 years, truly speaking, I understood the Bible recently. In a better way. I don't say perfectly. But in a better way. Because after reading the catechism of the Catholic Church. After spending a lot of time reflecting. Meditating on the word of God. And after listening to many spiritual fathers. And reading the church fathers and their books. Then I have understood the Bible in a better way. In the seminary. We all, we all went through all these studies. It's not that this, in the seminary the Bible is not taught. Yes Bible is taught. But we studied it not for our life, but for exam. And we just wanted to finish that studies and get the degree and become a priest. That's all. But now we know, at least I know, it was not that case. That should not be done like that. I should not have done like that only for the exam. Studying and get, them, get the mark and then become a priest. But I know I made a mistake then. Now I'm trying to understand the Bible in a better way by spending time and reading, reading and understanding the Catholic Church, catechism of the Catholic Church. It is helping me. So this is the case with all the priests. Therefore, just because we did something doesn't mean it is that is endorsed as something good. I make mistakes. Many priests make mistakes. Doesn't mean you should follow those mistakes. You have only one role model that is Jesus Christ. Even Mother Mary said, do as he says. Praise the Lord. Mother Mary never said, do as your parish priest says, as your parish priest does. Yes, whatever your parish priest and your priest, your spiritual father say, all what is good, all what is biblical, all what is in the catechism of the Catholic Church, we are obliged to follow. We are 100% obliged to follow. But not those things which are not in the catechism of the Catholic Church. We are not allowed to follow anything that is contrary to the teaching of the church. Even if it is given by priests. Or even if it is given by the bishops. We have to be very careful about this. Because why do I say this? Because there is a tendency in this modern world to divert. Even by the bishops and priests. From the true teaching of the Catholic Church. Praise the Lord. Let us read Titus chapter 1 verse 7 onwards. Titus chapter 1 verse 7 onwards. We read like this. For a bishop as God's steward 
must be blameless he must not be arrogant or quick tempered or addicted to wine or violent or greedy for for gain a bishop a priest should be like this verse 8 but he must be hospitable a lover of goodness prudent upright devout and self controlled was nine he must have a firm grasp of the word that is trustworthy in accordance with the teaching one of the criteria to be a priest or bishop is he must have a firm grasp of the word of god that is not just word of god what he as he interprets but in accordance with the teaching of the church so that he may be able both to preach with sound doctrine correct doctrine and also to refute those who contradict it the priest and bishop should be able to and refute those who contradict the teaching of the church many people say father i had so many doubts and i asked this priest and they could not answer i asked this priest and this bishop and asked these people they could not answer it it should not be every priest should be able to answer the spiritual things praise the lord and this is what the bibles and this is what the criteria to be a priest and bishop and unfortunately something sometimes it happens we priests are very well versed in all the philosophies of the world and we are well versed in quran and hinduism and all the other philosophies except the bible and that is why we read like this in malaki book of malaki chapter 2 was 1 and 2 we read like this and now o priest this command is for you was to if you will not listen if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name says the lord of hosts then i will send the curse on you and i will curse your blessings indeed i have already cursed them because you did not lay it to heart if you will not listen if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name for everything give glory to god do not compromise that jesus is the only savior and we read verse four onwards know then that i have sent this command to you that my covenant with levi may hold says the lord of hosts verse five my covenant with him was a covenant of life and well-being which i gave him this called for reverence and he revered me and stood in awe of my name he revered me the priest revered me was six true instruction was in his mouth true instruction should be in the mouth of a priest and bishop and all those people preachers true instruction should be there no wrong was found on his lips maybe in their life but in the lips no wrongs teaching wrong no wrongs he walked with me in integrity and uprightness and he turned many from iniquity verse seven for the lips of a priest should guard knowledge not knowledge about history and geography and philosophy and chemistry but the knowledge of the word of god and people should seek instruction from his mouth for he is the messenger of the lord of host he is not not the messenger of the business management he is not the messenger of education department he is not the messenger of the political parties he is not the messenger of any philosophers and philosophies but he is the messenger of the almighty god therefore he should be able to guard the knowledge praise the lord a hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters all those who are listening to me the lord needs priests like these if you are able to take this as a challenge and come forward and become a priest for christ and know the bible and study the bible and read the bible and understand the bible and live the bible and stand as a priest this is what the church needs today the lord is challenging you and inviting you and giving you inspiration let's pray together as we stand in the presence of the lord and declare our faith let us pray that so that there may be more and more priests who are known well versed in the bible more than anything else 
Let's also pray for all the priests around the world so that they all may be well versed in the Bible more than anything else and stand for the word of God.